Good morning, third and fourth grade. We're gonna go ahead and read the next section in our science book. It's part, chapter five, part nine, Water in the Air. So let's go ahead and read this verse from Ecclesiastes 1, 7 first. All the rivers run into the sea, yet the sea is not full. Unto the place from whence the rivers come, hither they return again. So this is gonna start talking about the water cycle. So we've got our water cycle. There's always water in the air. You will remember that although scientists do not consider water vapor to be part of air itself, there's no air which does not contain some amount of water vapor. The earth and its atmosphere are constantly exchanging water. As water moves from the earth to the air and back again, it changes from a liquid to a solid or a gas. This process is called the water cycle. The water cycle is part of God's plan for keeping the earth supplied with water. Because of the water cycle, we are able to use over and over again the water that God made when he created the world. Raindrops that fell on you last time it rained may, me, may be made up of water that has existed for thousands of years. That same water has probably fallen as raindrops many times before. The rain falls into the rivers and the rivers flow into the sea and yet the sea never overflows because the way the water cycle works. So we can see a picture of that here and I also have a drawing that I'll show you in just a moment. So we've got um, water here in the ocean and it evaporates up into the clouds where it condenses, condensation, it condenses down until the clouds become too heavy to hold the rain essentially. And then it comes back down as precipitation, which would be, usually we think of precipitation as rain, but precipitation can also be uh, snow or sleet or hail, basically any form of the way that water gets back down to the earth. So we have this precipitation and then that water is in lakes and rivers and oceans until it evaporates back up into the clouds. Now let's read about humidity. Water can be in the air as a solid, a liquid, or a gas. We see solid water with ice and snow, or liquid water as rain or fog, but when, when it is present in the air around us. The water in the gaseous form, or water vapor, is invisible. So we can see ice or snow this morning, um, or the, while I'm making this video, just a little while ago, it was snowing a bit, which is kind of crazy to think about it happening here in May, but it was. Um, we can see liquid water as rain or fog, but water vapor, the gaseous form of water, that is when it's invisible. The amount of water vapor or humidity in the air is changeable. If the air has high humidity, there's a lot of water vapor in the air. The temperature of the air affects humidity. Warm air is able to hold more water vapor than cool air. When we talk about the water in the air, we use the term relative humidity to describe the amount of water vapor in the air in relation to the temperature. If the air has a relative humidity of 100%, then the air is holding all of the water vapor that it can at that temperature. And there are places around the world that are very, very hot and have high humidity. And then there are places around the world that are also very warm but have a low humidity or a relative humidity, less very low numbers of the percentage. And there are also places around the, air, around the world where it's very cold and they don't have very much humidity at all because of that cold air. Now for evaporation. How does water vapor get into the air? Molecules of water are always moving. When water is heated, its molecules move faster. And we looked at that earlier in the chapter when we were reading about how the different uh, molecules and objects will vibrate. And so when it gets heated, it moves faster. The molecules bump into each other and bounce. Sometimes when the molecules at the surface of the water are bumped by other molecules below, they're throwing, thrown out of the water. So if we think about that for a moment here, got a little picture here. We've got our sun and the sun's warm rays they're warming up the water, and so the sun's warm rays that go down here to the ocean, they warm up the air down here at the ocean, and those molecules down the ocean, they start to move faster, they start to vibrate and bump into each other. And eventually, at some point, they'll bump into each other to the point that some of these water molecules will escape up out of the ocean. And uh, as we go back to reading in our book, these molecules escape into the air, and we call that evaporating. So when these water molecules evaporate up here into the air, we call that evaporation is what this is. And I'm gonna write that word down for us here. And we've got evaporation. 
So evaporation is these water molecules coming up out of the lakes, rivers, oceans that they're into and coming up into the air in a gas, gaseous form called water vapor. The process by which water, liquid water becomes water vapor is called evaporation. Energy from the sun provides a heat which causes evaporation. Water evaporates more quickly on hot days than on cool days. When we talk about the air being hot or cool, you must remember that it is like saying a book is old or new. This is important to keep in mind. It depends upon the other book you compare it to. Your school book from last year is an old book compared to the one you're using this year. So if you think about your spelling book from last year, that one is old earth than this year's spelling book, so we would call that an old book versus this year's spelling book being a new book. But if we compared last year's school book to a book used by children in colonial times, we would say that last year's book is a new book. Because if you think about last year's spelling book compared to the books that kids had a couple hundred years ago, last year's book is new and those books are the old books. So when we say something is hot or cold, we're comparing that thing to something else. So when we say that today is a cold day, we're comparing it to maybe yesterday or last week or what it usually is like at this time of year. Or if we say that today is a hot day or a warm day, once again, we're comparing it to other things around us. What yesterday was like, what last week was like, um, what last year it was like at this time of year, we're comparing it. And it's the same thing when we say old or new as when we say hot or cold. Now, to go back to our water cycle, we looked at this first part here, this evaporation, this water vapor coming up into the air, evaporating up into the air. And the next part of the, the water cycle is called condensation. And so what happens here is this water, this water vapor, it condenses up into these clouds and it makes the clouds kind of heavier. So this is the condensation part. And I'm gonna write that word for you here. We've got condensation. And this is where the water vapor that's up in the air all over this place starts to condense into these clouds. And it's condensing into the clouds. And as more and more water vapor condenses into these clouds, the clouds get heavier and heavier and heavier. And pretty soon, they aren't able to hold all of the water vapor that's in them. And so then we've got our final step of the water cycle, which is precipitation. And this precipitation, we, as I said, usually we think of it as rain, but it can be snow, sleet, hail, it could be even fog. And it's when this water comes back down out of the clouds. So this is the precipitation step. It's where the water is coming back out of the clouds. It had condensed up into the clouds and now it's coming as a form of precipitation back down to the earth and then what'll happen is that water flows into late into rivers here so i've got a river that i drew here um and those rivers eventually will flow into the ocean or it'll be in lakes and lakes sometimes end up in the ocean or even um they rivers will throw to flow to and from the lakes um but this water cycle is always happening. Whether the evaporation takes place from the ocean or from a lake or even from the river, it's always happening as the sun's rays heat it up, it gets warm enough that the water evaporates up into the air, into that water vapor, and then over time it'll condense down into the clouds and that condensation then won't, the clouds won't be able to hold all the condensation that they have. And so then we'll have precipitation where it rains is usually what we think of, but it's also your snow or your sleet, your hail. It's that water coming back down from the clouds. And ever since God created the world, we've been having this cycle. We've been having this cycle of the evaporation, condensation, precipitation. Now, if you think back into the Bible, though, there was a time before when God created the world and up to a certain point that we didn't really have precipitation as we normally think of it. And it's when Noah, Noah's ark, the story of Noah in the Bible occurred, that we really start to see precipitation as we normally think of it. Uh, we normally think of it as the rain that's coming down. And before that point, the Bible tells us that it hadn't rained. And so this water cycle since that point has been in place, always moving. And so the water that rains on you or snows on you has possibly rained or snowed on you before. And it's been around for many, many years before this. Have a great rest of your day.